And we're back in 11 minutes after. Gold prices edging higher since hitting a five-week low last Thursday. The pullback coming as the U.S. dollar gained ground against the euro. Now, joining us now for more on the outlook for gold prices is Rob McEwen. He's chairman and CEO of U.S. Gold and Lexam Explorations. Good morning. Morning, Carol. So, first of all, let's talk about your outlook for the gold market at this point. Gold um, prices. It's bullish, very bullish. You're very, very bullish. I think we're um, going to test $2,000 an ounce by 2010. Yes. That's what you've said. Yeah, gold's been moving in three stages. Uh, first was just a U.S. market audience, 300 million people, mm -hmm. and that went to the end of 04. Uh, we went up to $440 an ounce. By the end of 08, I think we'll test 850, and by the end of 010, we'll be north of 2000. What's what's the res or what's causing that move up? What's the catalyst or catalysts? Uh, well, there are a couple. One is um, annual mine production is declining, and the cost of production is going up. So there's less gold, and it's costing more to produce it. And investment demand is coming in. It's replacing jewelry demand as the, mm. the stalwart for the, the industry. What about the impact of the dollar? We talked about kind of uh, the, the moves that we've seen in the dollar. How is that impacting the outlook for gold? Well, they, they're moving in opposite directions. Right. So the, the weaker the dollar gets, the higher gold and other metals are. Now, we talked earlier this week with a technical analyst who watches the dollar very closely, and he said, based on a lot of different charts, that we're just getting ready for the dollar to actually move to the upside, that it is very oversold. So having said that, how does that, that we're talking about this inverse relationship, would you then assume that gold will move back up because of that, if we start to see, gold, to see the dollar move up? You, you might have some retrenchment, but the trend is up, and I think it'll carry on well through 2010. Um, Gold is money, right. and right now there's no premium in the market for risk, uh, uh, for liquidity. So gold you can get out of in two days if you're just selling it through the banks, whereas in the stock market it's three days, but if you want to move out of real estate, you can't do it in two or three days. Still, though, also the place for, you know, gold will be seen as kind of a safe haven. It's still seen as that, do you think, or not as much? I think more people are starting to look at it and wonder why it's performing so well when everyone thinks it shouldn't do anything. Interesting, interesting. What could change this scenario? You obviously are very, very bullish, and you laid out where you expect gold to go over the last, over the next few years. What could change that view? Large central bank selling by the Federal Reserve, um, maybe Germany and France. But what we've seen, there was a lot of selling in the beginning of uh, this decade, mm -hmm. and then the central banks stopped selling, and they started to buy. Russia's buying, China's buying. Um, so you could see possibly China go into this marketplace and want to stay bolster their currency mm -hmm. and buy gold, trade the dollars they have in foreign reserve right. for hard currency. Do, do you expect that though? I think you're going to see them buying a lot of hard currency and some of it will be gold. Okay, so for investors, you know, I always like to ask this question, investors sitting at home who are listening to this, what do they need to really take away based on, on your outlook for gold? And again, you're very, very bullish. What do they need to take away? an area for them to be investing in at this point, be it gold funds or, or what? They could buy gold funds or, st or gold stocks or gold bullion. Yeah. Um, I'm not clear which one will perform better. I, I think they should have a mix of both bullion and stocks. And depending on the risk attitude, do you want to go into the seniors or the juniors mm -hmm. in that range? Uh, the seniors, I think, are facing declining production and rising costs, so they'll just be a proxy for gold. You get much better price leverage in the junior, but you have to um, recognize the risk of, of the of illiquidity and no cash flow. What's the outlook for mining production? And I bring that up because we do have a chart, and hopefully we can bring it up for our viewers. And it basically shows, you know, gold prices versus mining production. And the top line, that orange line, is is uh, really measuring um, mine production, and then obviously gold prices is the white line. And really, where you're seeing kind of the, the drop off in mining production, I think that takes us back to about 2000, where you really started to see um, gold prices moving up. So I guess, you know, you've got to ask yourself, what is the outlook for mining production? Because there's a lot of factors that go to play, and maybe it's not a true, true inverse relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and we do want to point that out. So a lot of factors at play there. But what is the outlook for mining production? Because that certainly will play, right, into the, into the outlook and pricing of gold. What you're seeing is a lag. Uh, 2000 right. was the low for gold for 20 years. And we're watching uh, production fall off. We've seen an economy or uh, an industry that was just sitting there, not investing in its future. Right. And then the metal prices took off, and there's this great rush to develop new mines. So you will see production come up following the increased price in gold, 
but it's costing more to develop them, it's taking longer to develop, and there's an uncertainty as to whether they'll deliver the promise okay. of new production. One other thing I want to ask, and this is something very different than gold, but energy prices, I understand this is something you also follow very closely. Why and what's your outlook? Well, it's the fuel, it's the same thing. fuel of the economy. And we have uh, our supplies at risk, and there's increased demand. So there's, there's a shortage. And you look at oil and gas been moving up, and then uranium has just taken off. Right. It's gone from about $10 to over $150 in the last two years. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. I wish we had more time. Rob McEwen, appreciate your time this morning. Chairman and CEO at U.S. Gold and Lexham Explorations. All right, 16 minutes out.